British has always been a novelty in the MMA world, making up for a lack of pure talent with a mix of innovation and personality. Nothing symbolizes this better than the British promotion Cage Rage, whose mix of unearthed stars and vibrant characters made it one of the most beloved companies of the mid-2000s. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Cage Rage. On September 7, 2002, Cage Rage held its first event at the Fusion Leisure Center in South London. The show was the brainchild of Dave O'Donnell and Andy Gear, designed as a means of raising money for their martial arts school, but went down so well the two were encouraged to host further events. Early Cage Rage events were little different to regional shows at the time, with many fighters making their pro debuts and serving as a stepping stone to more established promotions. Notable names to appear during this time included Brad Pickett and Michael Bisping, who won the company's light heavyweight title before appearing on The Ultimate Fighter. As well as being the promotion's founders, O'Donnell and Gear served as on-screen personalities, O'Donnell reveling in the spotlight by often singing at the start of the company's events. The two were joined in the commentary booth by UFC veteran Ian Freeman, a team which, while not slick, certainly saved on hairstyling products. As MMA increased in popularity, British broadcaster Sky Sports soon wanted in on the action, believing Cage Rage had the foundations to set it as a local alternative to the UFC. A deal between the two parties was soon agreed, with Sky hosting primetime events on its channel and pumping major investment into the show's production values. The windfall also helped Cage Rage attract much bigger talent to the fold. At the time, the UFC's roster was much smaller than it is today, and with some international fighters unwilling to make the trip to Japan, Cage Rage was used as a stop-off point. Among the international names to set foot during this time was Melvin Manoff, whose victory over Cyborg Santos in 2005 is still considered one of the greatest light heavyweight fights of all time. Cage Rage's most famous recruit, however, was Anderson Silva. The Brazilian was considered damaged goods after a failed run with pride in the early 2000s, and was originally brought to the promotion as a sacrificial goat for the UFC star Lee Murray. Silva, however, would dominate Murray for 15 minutes. The Spider would become one of Cage Rage's longest reigning champions, dominating all comers with a level of striking unlike anything seen in MMA at the time. After his spectacular knockout of Tony Frickland at Cage Rage 16, Silva was courted by the UFC and started a run which saw him stake a claim as the greatest fighter of all time. The Silva years marked the high point of Cage Rage's tenure, with regular attendance of 15,000 fans and playing host to some of the top fighters in the world. While comparisons were made to the UFC, O'Donnell later stated that he modeled the company on pride embracing the spectacle of MMA as much as the in-ring product. While the UFC made an effort to shift away from its lad culture fan base, Cage Rage proved mm, far less subtle. Cage Rage also followed Pride with accusations of fight fixing, most involving Harry Potter star turned pro fighter Dave Legino. Legino had started his career losing his first three fights, only to suddenly claim wins over UFC veterans Kimo Leopoldo, Dan Severn, and a journeyman fighter by the name of Herb Dean. Legino's fights, however, weren't the only ones to be questioned for their legitimacy. Oh. It was just a clip across the nose, wasn't it? Or oh. it didn't land clean. Yeah, but... Cage Rage also weren't afraid to innovate on their shows. The most infamous example being the open guard rule, which allowed fighters to use illegal moves to a downed opponent provided they were a few feet away from the cage. The rule was introduced for Cage Rage 13, but due to the company's desire to work with a potential MMA board of control, the concept was quickly scrapped. Despite its innovations and in showcasing some of the world's top talent, Cage Rage was marred by sleaze and thuggishness throughout its run damaging MMA at a time when it was attempting to be taken seriously as a mainstream sport. A match between Attila Kubele and Richard Baukit from Cage Rage 11 saw multiple brawls before and after the bout, 
while a match involving UFC veteran Cabbage Carrera was cancelled after Cabbage was mugged in his hotel room hours before the fight. The controversies extended away from the cage. Co-founder Andy Gear was forced to flee from the UK due to owing £800,000 from his stone repair and refurbishment group. The ongoing legal action led him to leave the promotion shortly before its demise. In 2007, Cage Rage entered a promotional alliance instigated by the entertainment firm Pro Elite, allowing fighters from Strikeforce, K1, and Elite XC to compete for the promotion and vice versa. The deal, however, quickly fell apart. After K1 refused to allow Bob Sapp to compete on Cage Rage's April show days before the event, forcing the promotion to hire washed veteran Tank Abbott on short notice. Pro Elite would purchase a controlling stake in Cage Rage that September, but their acquisition came at the worst possible time. Andy Gear would leave the promotion shortly after to be replaced by King of the Cage boss Chris Cordero, while its increasingly tacky presentation style soon attracted negative publicity. The rebel spirit that brought Cage Rage to the table was starting to unravel. What oh, is this idiot just nutted Phil Baroni. He just nutted Phil Baroni. While Cage Rage attempted to improve its image, including wheeling Rosie Sexton onto breakfast TV, the damage was already done. In May 2008, Sky announced they would no longer be broadcasting Cage Rage events following a foul-mouthed post-fight interview with Paul Daly. Most, however, put the blame on TV ratings, which by this point had dropped to just 19,000 viewers per event. Cage Rage would hold its final events on the adult channel Nuts TV. Very fitting, right? But without Sky's income and the lack of star power, fight quality absolutely diminished. And when Pro Elite shut its doors in the wake of Kimbo Slice's scandal, Cage Rage quickly followed suit. O'Donnell attempted to start a new promotion under the Cage Rage name, but a legal dispute with Gear led the firm to be rebranded Ultimate Challenge, which would host events for the decade and help start the careers of Jimmy Manoa and Michael Venom Page. Cage Rage never reached its goal of being the British UFC, but its farming of top talent aligned with its boisterous persona means it's reflected upon fondly by most fans. Cage Rage was a major factor in giving Britain its place at MMA's top table. A wacky, at times sleazy one, but hey, a place nonetheless. This is the INC. Support the channel on Patreon, 